<laughs> yep, where you go. Tēnā koutou katoa, my name is James Strange. I'm the Labour candidate in the Taupo region for the upcoming election. I'm a school teacher, I've got four young children, and three things I'm incredibly passionate about. Number one, the economy. Number two, education. And three, children. Firstly, the economy. There is a common belief that National are good with the economy and that Labour don't know what they're doing with the economy. We ran nine years of surpluses under the Helen Clark government. We know how to create a fair economy. <coughs> Basically, what summed up National's views to me was in 2010, they gave tax cuts to the wealthy, those who needed it the least, and they put up GST, which proportionately hurt those at the bottom. National don't care about fairness. They are only out for those at the top. They're looking after their mates. We need an economy that works for all New Zealanders. We need a high wage, high value, manufacturing based economy. We need to bring manufacturing jobs back to New Zealand and especially in areas like Tokoroa. It's a disgrace that we send raw logs overseas for other countries to add value and then we import those products back into New Zealand. It's stupidity. Second one, education. This is the main reason why I put my name forward. I'm a primary school teacher, and the last three years have been a disaster for the education sector. And I say they've been a disaster because the government are not listening to teachers. They'll listen to experts from America and other places. You know, Treasury have got all their ideas, but they're not listening to teachers. For example, Hekia Parata. <coughs> Hekia Parata stated that the class size does not determine the, 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 the learning of the student. It's about the quality of the teacher. How many hours has she spent in front of a class? Zero. Exactly. Other things, no pay. My pay was down $300 last week. Uh, the government has spent $45 million trying to fix this thing. Charter schools. Do we really want our children taught by people who aren't even trained teachers? We need a high trust model in teachers, our teaching professionals. Third one, children. As I said, I've got four young children. Our children are not just our future, they're our present. And many children are living in poverty in this country. And that should not be happening in a proud first world country like ours. We provide food that we give to the world, yet we can't feed our own people. There's something wrong with that picture. We need a change of government. We need a government that believes in equality, fairness, and opportunity. Three minutes of questions. <laughs> how, long, how long to talk for? Two minutes? <laughs> It is a big issue, if I'm, if I'm correct, around 50 people died in the workplace last year and in the forestry area, um, around 10 or 11 people. Now, the Labour government and the national government are fundamentally opposed in, in, in the area of regulation. As a general rule, national will take their hands off and leave everything to the market. They won't want to step in in many areas. They don't like to regulate. Labour... Although we don't believe in nanny state and communism, we will step in where we have to. And that's an area we need to step in. There needs to be regulations. It's not right that forestry workers are working these incredibly long shifts on dangerous machinery yeah, and dying. So at times the government needs to step in, and that's an area we do need to step in. The problem, the problem in actual fact is that we have the regulations. The regulations are in place; they're there. The it's just that we burnt that what they've done is gutted the systems, whereby those things are, are studied. I mean, I can't remember the exact the, the exact numbers now, 
right off the top of my head. But in terms of the inspectors for the uh, for the uh, for the mining inspectors, the guys that should have all right anticipated what was going to happen at Pike River just never got anywhere near it. The Americans have done the same thing. I don't know whether anybody knows the numbers of, of the stuff that was happening in, in the um, in the Gulf when the when the when the um, wells when the oil, when, during the oil spills they, they had no people they had the regulations the regulations were in place there was just nobody was happy to do it. So I mean you know. I, yeah, I, I mean, you, you have to look at funding, don't you? I have one one thing that I've looked right throughout New Zealand with that. If we spent 10 years getting a professional body of HR, our HR in New Zealand is the most... Okay, I talked to the guy, he actually employed me for a job, who was three months, he re resigned three months before the Pike River, 29 people. If that's the chap that is responsible for HR, and that's where we need to uplift the um, right through a professional body of HR because that's what's letting our workplace down that's what's letting the employees down and we're not getting productivity out of um, the employment place so that's one thing I'd like you to do a research thing on is how do we get a professional body of HR and upskill them anybody can just walk into HR and it's crippling this country yeah. I mean, you have human resources at the basis of what you're looking at but when you're hitting right wing profit driven capitalists mm. which is what's happening with our hospitals and our individual base mm. and with the forestry mm. how are we going to deal with it it's all about having teachers with HR from a union perspective we have to fight that every day mm. there's a phrase that sums it up and that's profits over people thank you yes yeah. we're people first people yeah. first yeah. yeah and I think that's where the party actually looks at it isn't it we look after the people it's just six minutes. Thank you very much. Thank you. He can stay there. He can turn his bloody camera. <laughs>